Coming up, a look at the Braintree School's tech department. A student's first year in Braintree High and America. A track star sprinting towards success. And more. I'm Shannon Stanton. I'm Marie Alvaran. And the April edition of WAMP TV starts now. Computers and the Wi-Fi needed to connect them to the internet were always an important part of our daily routines. And in the past year, they have become even more important. Jeff and David sat down with Director of Technology, Rebecca Kidwell, to discuss some of the obstacles for making online learning a reality. Throughout the years, Braintree Public Schools technology has changed drastically with the ages in order to adapt to the new environment of education and applied sciences. However, this begs the question, what really has changed and improved? as well as how have we obtained these changes? So I've been here for the whole, the whole change, but the biggest change was probably in 2015 when we um, got widespread Wi-Fi access across the district. No one is better at answering this question other than Rebecca Kidwell. Ms. Kidwell is the head of the IT department for Braintree Public Schools. For nearly two decades, she has worked in the Braintree Public Schools district more than enough time to see the technological changes that impacted the education so drastically. Since 2015, we've really been working to increase the number of Chromebooks that we have, make sure that all teachers reliably have a computer all the time. Um, we've implemented the Bring Your Own Device program at the high school, and as of this year, we included the middle school in that as well. These improvements of better computers, better internet, and a lot more all may seem good and almost be a blessing to some, but trying to obtain these improvements was a struggle for the school district. Well, this year it would have been a year where we needed to replace a lot of Chromebooks anyway and so to have it be that during a shortage of the actual technology um, was certainly a, a double whammy of obstacles. While there have been obstacles such as availability shortages as well as economic troubles, there is an additional more physical obstacle for the high school that many may not think about immediately. It is very difficult to take a building from the early 1970s that is entirely concrete and cinder block and get Wi-Fi to permeate gently throughout the whole thing. While these challenges all may seem daunting at first, the IT department will continue on improving the technology across all the schools. We continue to try to improve with um, better access points, greater density of access points, um, and also we have recently improved the switches. The future of learning relies on technology. Remote learning will be refined and will stay. Technology and Braintree Public Schools will also need to evolve with technology. Reporting for WAMP TV, Jeffrey Tam and Justin Pyrus. Thanks, Jeff and David. Looks like online learning could be around for a long time in some form. There's so been so many changes. Yes, but the Braintree Schools tech department isn't the only one facing changes. One Braintree High student's whole life changed when he moved thousands of miles away. Maria and Kwa have the story. With the arrival of the pandemic, our daily lives have changed drastically. We can't go out and travel like we used to. But for Fernando, it was an entirely different country. Okay, my name is Fernando, Fernando Gaspar Rodriguez, and I'm from Mexico. Fernando immigrated from Mexico amongst the rise of the coronavirus pandemic. It has had to experience a new environment within COVID restrictions. It was some late July from 2020. It was different, of course, but with the safety measures applied with the mask and the whole six feet apart, it was pretty smooth for what I was expecting. And even though he attends a school in a different nation, he doesn't think that it's that much different. I wouldn't say it's better, but I will, will not also say that it's worse. So even though it's in a different language, the amount of stress is a little bit lower. 
We talk to Fernando again, and he says he's happy that at least one thing in his life hasn't changed. His passion for art. I don't know how to answer that. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not bad. It's actually really good. I like it. I like it. I like it there. The community is really nice. The uh, classmates are really nice. Sometimes I, I feel like I'm a little bit lost because um, I kind of don't get what they're saying. But that's because since the meetings are at the end of the school, my, my brain is just so tired of English that I just don't pick up what they're saying. Fernando is an artist, and while he does recognize there are differences in how it's done here compared to Mexico, he still enjoys it. Back there was like an extra art class. And we did something that we were being taught how to use, I don't know, watercolors or stuff like that. While in here, it's more of, I don't know how to explain, but we do more well, different activities regarding art. We don't necessarily, well, we're not being taught art, that's what I mean. He's still getting used to PHS, but Fernando feels that he has a bit more freedom when it comes to his artwork. I guess being with people that enjoy doing art and that understand at a certain point how you like to do art. This year brought many changes for Fernando, but fortunately, he was able to use his love for art to help him adjust to his new environment. This is Kwa Tong and Maria Alvaran reporting for WOM TV. That's great Fernando has been able to get involved in Braintree, especially this year. It must be so hard. Yeah, he said it was a relief to finally talk to someone in Spanish again. Unlike Fernando, I have been at BHS for the past four years, but I just returned to in-person learning this week, which I explore in this week's commentary. After doing school online for 13 months, I am finally going back in person and closing the tab on this chapter of my life. Although I'm excited to be back in the classroom, it is a strange adjustment to make, especially since I'm graduating in only a month. I mean, this is the first time I've needed a backpack my whole senior year, but that's not the only odd thing about this. The main difference of being back in school is having social interaction with people face to face. In remote school, I was always on mute, so I didn't talk during the day. But now I'm surrounded by my classmates and teachers and don't have to click a button every time I want to say something. These small interactions are what I miss the most about in-person learning. Just being able to have conversations throughout the day makes school much more enjoyable for me. Education-wise, I developed a habit of multitasking during my online classes because it was easy to go back and forth between tabs and also hard to pay attention when I was staring at a screen all day. Now, it's challenging to get back to focusing on the lesson happening right in front of me. A week ago, I was spending hours each day on Google Meet and Google Classroom, and now I barely open my laptop, so it's going to take some time to get used to. However, there isn't much time left for me to do that. At the end of this week, I'll only have 25 more days at BHS, even though I don't feel like a senior since I haven't been in the building until now. With that being said, I'm going to try and enjoy my last five weeks of high school, despite the drastic changes in-person learning is having on my routine. Now, I have some classes to get to. I just came back to school too, and it's so different being remote and in-person. And it's also kind of weird being a senior this year. We actually talked to some other Braintree High seniors about what they're missing. Let's take a look. Just like the big events I've been looking forward to since like freshman year. Like, what I'm missing most about my senior year is orchestra concerts. <laughs> I wish we could have had a prom. I miss people having respect for the upperclassmen. Now it just feels like we're all seniors. We all get the same thing. I am missing the sympathy that they gave 2020. Um, and not class of 2021, because I feel as though we've missed out on a lot more. Sports, going to football games, sporting events. My senior privileges, my study, my gym. So what I miss most is seeing my friends smiles under their masks. I wish we had um, senior privileges and senior study. Football games. Senior privileges. Um, I'm definitely going to miss like prom and homecoming and stuff. The first half of the year that we weren't in school full time and I wish that we had the whole year to be here together. The like camaraderie with my classes and like those like inside jokes that you have in like those classes with your friends. Homecoming, football games, senior privilege, yeah. Um, I miss dance competitions and games. Like the pep rallies and all things like that. 
and like everyone coming together in like big groups. Being with my class the most because we're not with everyone and this year overall just kind of sucks. As a senior, I would have to agree with most of that. Agreed, but at least we're back in school. But here's our quick reminder to continue following COVID guidelines at BHS. According to the CDC, one-way routes and hallways help to maintain healthy environments. Follow the arrows, slow spread. That was brought to you by our Intro to TV and Video students. They did a great job. Make sure to talk to your guidance counselor or Mr. Nellis if you want to join us next year. All right, enough self-promotion. Let's take a look at our next story about the BHS track team. Throughout the past year, the COVID-19 pandemic has left many feeling unmotivated or drained throughout their day-to-day -day lives. But one Braintree high jumper by the name of Brian Yen has decided to look at the whole situation in a different light. I think it's helped me more than it's been negative because if anything it's given me more free time to kind of work on myself and kind of get better at whatever that I'm doing. And with all this newfound free time, Yan used this to strengthen his competitive nature. With all the restrictions, I mean, it's pushed me to try to be better than other people. But keeping yourself motivated. Not an easy task, which is why Yan has some people to keep his spirits up. All, me and all the high jump guys, we just like to compete against each other, and we kind of just better ourselves like that. It's just seeing each other after this much time off and a whole pandemic and trying to reunite and reignite the spark of competition. Yan utilizes his competition to keep himself motivated, but he knows not everyone likes to compete. Like I said, with more free time, I've been able to focus on myself more and kind of find what motivates me throughout the season. If you put your mind to it and you find what drives you to be great, then you can definitely do what your heart desires. Motivation is an easy thing to lose nowadays, but as long as you have something that you love to fall back on, it's really easy to get it back. So go out, find what motivates you. Reporting for WOM TV, this has been David Nguyen and Jeff Kaiser. That was so inspiring. Now I want to throw on some sneakers and go for a run. Hold your horses, Maria. Wait until you see our next story. Annabella and Michaela talk to a teacher who's gaining something more than muscle from a sport. This is Annabella attempting to lift weights. As you can see, it's not so easy for her, but for Mrs. Violet, an English teacher at Braintree High. Lifting weights comes as easy as grading papers. So I would say I started weightlifting when I was in high school. And then as an adult, I kind of went in and out of exercising. And so I'd say two years is when I got serious about lifting. She quickly fell in love with the sport. Biggest enjoyment I get from doing it is it's so interesting to see what your body is capable of. I have a real appreciation for what my body can do and how I can push my body beyond limits I ever thought possible. Through her hard work, she's been able to achieve more than she could imagine. My initial goal was just to be able to um, squat and deadlift my body weight, and then when I accomplished that, to move to double my body weight, it's been really interesting to see that I can put my mind towards something and be able to really accomplish it. While balancing teaching English classes, she finds time for her hobby by competing and showing off her skills. 
Oh, competitions are very intense. Um, it, it's kind of addicting in a way, that feeling of performing in front of people and having them cheer you on and like you've lifted weight, you're not quite sure you were gonna be able to do that day. Through the sweat and the weights, her physical body was not the only thing improving. So for me, I mostly have been able to form a stronger relationship with my father because even though he lives in Maine and I live down here, I send him videos, I talk to him all the time. You know, when I was in the last month before my competition, we spoke every single day. As it turns out, her father was the one to introduce her to the sport. Well, my father started training me when I was a sophomore just for athletic purposes, to be better for sports. I grew up in the sport, my father, um, hold state records and he held a world record for a while so i grew up watching him compete her father held many different titles in the state and across the nation this helped her grow as an athlete that my father trained me and he's so well in the sport that he had made sure my form was really strong from my initial stages from my high school years all the way up to now the sport planted a passion in miss violet's life and a stronger bond in her heart and so it's been nice forming a relationship with him outside of father daughter but also in the sport that he loves and i've learned to love Reporting from Want TV, this is Michaela Buckley and Annabella Valley. Who knew we had so many great athletes inside of BHS? I know, right? Now we'll take a look at one more athlete whose passion led them to success. Abby McGonigal, a junior at BHS, has an amazing talent that she is happy to share. I was thinking a sport that requires endurance, stamina, power, um, but it's also the talent that not a lot of people are aware of. There were plenty of times that I didn't want to go to dance, but around the age of 10 and 12, I started getting competitive with the girls my age. Um, and that was when I started to really enjoy going to dance. Um, I was given a dress that was a certain color and it was purple and black. And for Abby, that purple dress seems to be her good luck charm. So I am a two-time regional champion. I came in first for the first time in 2018. And the second time I won, I didn't have a good feshing season and I wasn't winning every one like I did the year before. Um, and the night before I danced, probably 12 hours before, I sprained my ankle. But I still got up on stage and I kind of faced my fear of dancing on an injury. Um, so I've been a world qualifier technically five times now. I'm, I was very nervous in that sense that I knew that other dancers were out to get me. Um, Unfortunately for her competitors, they were not able to beat her. I just pushed myself and I did the best I could and I, I still won, I came out on top. And top three, top two, and first I was in utter shock. Um, it's, it's the best feeling in the whole world. It's just this like pure excitement that I wasn't expecting. Um, to kind of narrow it down, I really owe it to my mom and my uncle. Um, my ultimate dream would, day to, would be in Riverdance or be in a show and tour and kind of be able to share our culture with the world. I, I go to the studio and I put my dancing shoes on and I'm ready to work. It's kind of like a, a work dog putting a collar on. You know, they, I put my dancing shoes and I know I'm, I need to start working hard. Uh, dancing just makes me feel happy. Um, when I get on stage, there's just a different kind of feeling that I feel from anywhere else. Um, it's a sense of joy that it's kind of a, it's like serotonin. I, I get on stage and it's like the happiest I ever am. Um, it's obviously like the hardest thing I've ever done. You know, I get on stage and I'm gassed, I'm winded, I'm tired. But I need to show people that what I'm capable of and what the sport is. Um, and that's the only way to do it is performing, so. Reporting for WAMP TV, this is Mary Kelleher. Thanks, Abby, for proving once again that dance is a sport. That's it for the April edition of WAMP TV. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash WAMPTVBHS and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at WAMP TV. Also, check out the WAMP cast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify or wherever you choose to listen. That's it for this time. We'll see you next time on Wong TV. TV.